are a quick review. In setting up a model of a random experiment, the first thing to do is to come up with a list of all the possible outcomes of the experiment. So that list is what we call the sample space. It's a set. And the elements of the sample space are all the possible outcomes. Those possible outcomes must be distinguishable from each other. They're mutually exclusive. Either one happens or the other happens, but not both. And they're collectively exhaustive. That is, no matter what, the outcome of the experiment is going to be an element of the sample space. And then we discussed last time that there's also an element of an art in how to choose your sample space, depending on how much detail you want to capture. This is usually the easy part. Then the more interesting part is to assign probabilities to our model, that is to make some statements about what we believe to be likely and what we believe to be unlikely. The way we do that is by assigning probabilities to subsets of the sample space. So as we have our sample space here, we may have a subset A, and we assign a number to that subset, P of A, which is the probability that this event happens. Or this is the probability that when we do the experiment and we get an outcome, it's the probability that the outcome happens to fall inside that event. We have certain rules that probabilities should satisfy. They're non-negative. The probability of the overall sample space is equal to one, which expresses the fact that we are certain, no matter what, the outcome is going to be an element of the sample space. Well, if we set it up right so that it exhausts all possibilities, this should be the case. And then there's another interesting property of probabilities that says that if we have two events or two subsets that are disjoint and we're interested in the probability that one or the other happens, that is, the outcome belongs to A or belongs to B, for disjoint events, the total probability of these two taken together is just the sum of their individual probabilities. So probabilities behave like masses. The mass of the object consisting of A and B is the sum of the masses of these two objects. Or you can think of probabilities as areas. They have, again, the same property. The area of A together with B is the area of A plus the area of B. But as we discussed at the end of the last lecture, uh, it's useful to have in our hands a more general version of this additivity property, which says the following. If we take a sequence of sets, A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on, and we put all those sets together, it's an infinite sequence, and we ask for the probability that the outcome falls somewhere in this infinite union, that is, we are asking for the probability that the outcome belongs to one of these sets. And assuming that the sets are disjoint, we can again find the probability of the overall set by adding up the probabilities of the individual sets.